All right, shitty little Videjo of this Nisso Electronics High Pro Topra keyboard. Uh, this bad boy right here, I've currently got it uh, disassembled, which is why you might notice some of the keycaps like sinking into the board here. Um, that's not quite normal. Normally they sit just a smidge higher, um, but it's not too noticeable in this video because um, these are high pro keycaps. Topra high pro, baby. Um, this keyboard, at least today, as I'm recording it and inevitably uploading it, this bad boy typically runs for around 500 bucks, which, you know, Topra's already expensive. Add in the high pro keycaps, especially nice high pro keycaps, given the sub legends and the front printing, and the fact that much of the front printing is even in blue and it's all die subbed. Oh, it's glorious. Um, it should be appreciated that the front row on the main cluster and the main cluster only, because as you go off to the numpad and the arrow keys, these are back to normal, but on the main cluster, the bottom row is um, weirdly low profile. They're still kind of scoopy, except of course the space bar, but they're just kind of low. Um, it's exaggerated here because again, it's taken apart uh, and just sort of sitting apart, but you get the idea. The space bar, by the way, I'm not sure if this is because it's um, such a flat keycap or not, but it sounds very different from other stabilized keys. Um, it's like high pitched and clacky. I don't know what's going on there. Um, there are some sound inconsistencies across this board, um, like low pitched, higher pitched, low pitched again. I don't know. I don't know what's special about this row, but this row is just higher pitched than any of the other rows for no good reason. Um, the layout is pretty nice. It's a pretty standard modern layout, just with a little bit of a small space bar, a uh, split backspace, uh, sp ugh, an ISO enter. Make fun of your friendly Europeans if you see any. Um, and a split right shift, but it's split on the left side instead of on the right side, like in a focus layout. Uh, so it's it's pretty usable. It's, you know, it's not too, it's not too out there. And it includes an numpad. It isn't like one of those god-awful TKL things where they keep the fucking nav cluster and get rid of the numpad. Don't... <sighs> I'm dropping it. I'm not getting started. The um, cable actually comes out of the right side, which I think is nice because I'm left-handed. Um, but I'm sure that right-handed people, which is most of the population, are not going to be huge fans. The uh, cable itself is nice and long and coiled and get in frame, you big motherfucker. Um, it's relatively thin, very pliable, quite nice, and at the end, PS2. Speaks bog standard PS2, trivial to convert, which is really nice. Um, it doesn't have too much of a forehead, but it's got a pretty fat chin. I do like me some bezel -y keyboards. I think they sound nice. Um, going to how this bad boy is assembled, um, we're going to flip her over, which is happening off camera because I am not a coordinated person. Here you can see the sticker on the back. Um, it is held together by one, two, three, four five and six screws um all but this one right here actually are screwed straight into plastic and they are like wood screw style stuff um but that one screw has a washer and it's going into a brass screw socket which actually anchors mm. nope, nope, nope. this is a bit of a pain in the butt to open one-handed so you're going to enjoy seeing crap right now. I gotta flip her over, and I'm just gonna, like, lift the top off. Um, up, up, up. Miserable piece of shit to open. It's easier with two hands, and when you're doing it yourself, it's not such a problem. Um, but you open it up, and, um, that middle screw there screws into this screw socket on the assembly, which is kind of an interesting thing. Um, oh, I didn't even talk about the feet. 
The feet on the back here, they stick out. Um, they are screwed through this metal back plate. Um, and uh, they're a bit stiff, but they're not too bad. Um, they're nice and adjustable. Uh, they're a little wiggly at base, but whatever, it doesn't get in the way. Um, and we do have some nice rubbery feet down here. Um, and this is like a pretty solid piece of metal on the back plate. Uh, nice and thick, bent up a little bit for extra strength. Good stuff. Um, let's see here. The uh, assembly itself actually screws into the top case by a couple of screw sockets, brass screw sockets. Um, one, two, uh, uh, three, and four, but um, I've already taken the liberty of disassembling that. Um, and it's also got four lock light, or three lock lights up here, uh, which are mounted onto the PCB, and they're not like long, sticky up lock lights, which is kind of interesting. Uh, that's something I'm used to seeing, and these are nice and short. Well, nice and short. They're short. Um, I guess that keeps them from getting bent when you're disassembling it, but when this thing is held together by wood screws, it's not really something you want to disassemble a ton anyway. Um, it's mounted with a pretty thick plate over here as well, uh, and you can see it's spaced apart from the PCB, as, you know, is pretty standard. Um... Overall, this thing is pretty well built. Uh, it's got like no wobble or flexing or whatever uh, when it's actually screwed together, which is pretty cool. It's, you know, it's a well-built board. I do have um, some gripes with the um, with the way it types. It's like one of those um, ASCII protocol boards where sometimes, at least on the numpad, you press a key and you can't hold it down. You press it and that's it. Um, I don't know why that is. That doesn't seem to apply to the main cluster. It just kind of aggravated me when I was typing on this thing uh, because I had to have a numpad off to the side. Um, I'm not sure if I remembered to mention, but the uh, switches themselves feel very light, almost linear. Um, if you press them slowly and lightly, you can feel the tactility, but when you're typing on it at speed, there's, there's no tactility. Um... I think that just about covers all of the facts. Um, my ending remarks are that this is a pretty neat keyboard, but it's it's just got a bunch of little niggles with it that I don't like. It's not worth five hundred bucks. Um, even ignoring the Topra tax, it's it's not worth five hundred bucks. Even ignoring that these switch these keycaps are rare, it's, uh, this isn't. It's a neat keyboard. I like it, but I would not pay more than like maybe 150 bucks for it. It's just, it gets the shit kicked out of it by so much else. Um, I hope that Innozens enjoys this thing, but uh, it has, having, having proxied this, this has cured me of any desire to get one of these for myself. I hope that this uh, video has been useful to uh, help save any of you guys out there from wasting your money on one of these. Um, not to imply that Innozens is wasting his money. He likes, he has, he likes these sorts of weird, expensive, fancy things um, in just sort of a, an Innozens way. But if you're looking for just a good keyboard, don't spend 500 bucks on one of these. Um, yeah, I hope that this has been a useful video. I hope that you've enjoyed nine minutes of me ranting, and I'm going to stop here.